Um, and was it weird to come back to uh, to a TV show after being gone for like a few years? Um, you mean in terms of? Well, well, because you did your first episode and then you came back for the final episode, which was like yeah, years later. I, yeah, you're talking like there was like where Casey got married. Yeah, and like yeah, um, that was fun. And you know what's what uh, what I found really enjoyable about that is uh there are characters that um uh there are characters that like i have done and i have no idea what voice i did for them um and this actually i do a lot of audiobooks and this happens a lot now where we're like i'll record uh a uh you know a, a sci-fi epic and there might be like 30 characters and i'll finish that book and i'll be like oh i'm glad that's done Ooh, that was fun. It was a really long thing. And then like three years will go by and then I'll, uh, you know, I'll get an email where it's like, Hey, we need you to record the sequel. And now I'm trying to like, Oh man, I wrote 30 characters and they all have different voices. And now I have to remember what each of the voices were. And so like, I, I have started taking notes. Um, but so a lot of times I don't remember the voice I did. And I will say coming back to turtles were like that. There was something about that voice that was like, I always wish there was like more of that character around. I loved doing the show and I loved doing that character. And it was, and I did remember when I would go back in there, I was like, Oh, I remember this guy. Like they played it a little bit for me just as a, uh, you know, a reminder, but it was not hard in that particular case to jump back in there and, and, you know, get back with that guy for, for, you know, a very special episode of turtles. And and was, and was, uh, was the script quite weird for that episode? You know, it's funny. I don't, I actually think I probably only had, uh, only had like my pages for that script. Um, I I don't think that's, you know, they have become in general, not, you know, not just them, but like anyone uh, much more careful about uh, proprietary material and like things getting out on the internet. I'm, I don't think at the time of that recording, that was as much the concern. Sometimes it was just about like saving paper. So it was about like, you know, I didn't have like a ton of lines and it was easy enough for them to be like, yeah, yeah, these are your like 10 lines in this episode or maybe even less. So like, I think probably for that, you know, I was just looking at like, you know, one sheet, um, you know, so I, but I don't recall reading, you know, like, and that was the thing we, we, it wasn't the kind of thing where they would like give you a script and you would like go away for a week and mark up all the pages where it would be like, here's the script, get in the booth. Um, and, uh, yes, you know, so like, even if, even if you did have the full script, there wouldn't be a lot of time to like really get a sense of, of, you know, what was going on. If you had questions, the director would be like, no, 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 ninjas are coming in. They, they came in a few pages ago. Now you're really worried and they're about to hit you, make a noise like they just hit you. Um, you know, so there, but there wasn't quite, uh, uh, you know, the, the extensive prep time that uh, there might be on some, some other things. Um, and do you ever do tra- uh, traditional animation or dubbing? Uh, I, uh, I, my personal preference as a voiceover actor uh, is would be traditional uh, animation. Um, dubbing dubbing can be fun. There's sort of like, you know, a, a it's that thing where like you, there there are like special skills involved with the dubbing um, that actually make it a lot harder to do, um, and that can be like that, that challenge can be fun and finding ways to like infuse a character with life when you're limited to their, their flap uh, can be a, uh, you know, it can be a pain in the butt. It can also be fun. Uh, but there was nothing, you know, it's so much more fun to just go in there. And cause especially like sometimes you go in there and uh, uh, you know, a line wouldn't make sense. And you'd be like, Hey, can we like change something with this? And like, usually there, the, uh, uh, you know, there would be a, um, uh, you know, you, you'd have so much more freedom, whether that was, would be freedom to like improv, even just like a teeny tiny bit. Like they'd sometimes be like, yeah, go see, we'll see what we get. 
Um, and I do think you'd be able to, I, I'd be surprised if there were very many uh, voice actors who preferred dubbing to, uh, uh, to more traditional, like where you get to make some of those <laughs> decisions yourself um, as to how you're going to present the line. And, and, and do you prefer to do TV shows and movies? Uh, as a as a fan or as a performer, um, and, and, and as a performer, uh, you know. So for me, I, I um, I've left I've left behind uh, uh, largely uh, acting, um, b- limited only really to to audiobooks now, which are sort of their own category. Um, I. At one point, back back when I was, you know, doing it more more, uh, you know, as a career, um, I definitely started feeling like, oh, you know, TV and film is like always more fun, and like honestly, it wasn't. Like I loved the 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 variety of voiceover work. I loved where like, you know, there would be so much freedom in in ironically in limiting your performance to just your, to your voice um, where, you know, there were, there were so many more characters that you could create where you weren't limited to like what you looked like or how tall you were or, or, you know, uh, any of those things. So I, I, I wouldn't say there was a, I wouldn't say there was a preference there. Um, but I, uh, I definitely prefer, I definitely loved the voiceover work and I would say like certainly the voiceover work became uh what was the um uh, uh you know the my favorite thing that I would be doing and that is still what I'm you know my career even though it's limited to audiobooks primarily uh like I love being able to build a world with you know just sitting in my chair no, and what's been your favorite project to do uh across any yeah, Any kind of voiceover, or should we limit it to to? Anything, I really. so man, so many over the course. I'll go with I'll go with the the nice one, uh, which is that uh, I met my wife on a. Uh, but neither of us uh, consider ourselves actors anymore. My wife is a, a writer, and uh, but we did meet acting on a uh, TV show called Guiding Light, where the first day we met, uh, our scene was a kissing scene and uh, uh you know where we're like i love you candace i love you tommy and then we you know now it's uh, how many years it's almost 14 years later we got two kids and like it's all because some casting director thought we looked good together um so i'll i'll say that was my favorite project ever and um, so so uh, and, and that's a favorite and so i'll say you call classic toll question and, and who's your favorite turtle Oh man. So, okay. Uh, I would have to say when I was a kid, when I was a kid and it's probably true today, I always, I always liked the idea of, of like the quote unquote leader. I don't know if that's especially like, I don't remember whether like Leonardo's like, designated the leader or he just accepts that mantle but as a kid i was a leonardo guy um i have yeah i'm gonna say i'm gonna say leonardo i think i don't think that's changed i love the weapons i uh uh i can recognize that probably the other ones are a little more fun um but Leonardo, Leonardo is going to be my uh, my go to pick. And and with McKay, you said a few lines on the show. If I remember, I don't. I mean, all I remember is, "Give me the money, Casey. Come on, Casey." That's like that's all I remember. Just a lot of like really f- a lot of frustration with Casey. Come on, Casey. I need it. Come on, Casey. <laughs> I, I don't if there's a specific line that you want to remind me of uh, uh, yeah. real to... yeah I have two quotes here uh, from yeah. uh, so the first one is um, um, it's, it's about Mark's DX 
It's what? Uh, Spot Marks the X. Oh, right. There you, thank you. Thank you for my Spot Marks the X, Casey. Spot Marks the X. Um, All right. Give me, give me the next one. Let's do said, it. So next one is um, uh, from the one episode, uh, which is, um, uh, and uh, I'm all shaking, April. What's shaking, April? Yeah. What's shaking, April? <laughs> oh, April. What's shaking, April? <laughs> wow, perfect. Thank you so much. Thank this you. Is... It's fun. Like I said, it's fun. It's always, I love this guy. It's always fun to revisit, revisit him. Um, <laughs> so it's my pleasure. <laughs> well, let's remember childhood. Thank you so much. <laughs> and, and and is there anything you want to, uh, to, uh, to promote? Uh, I, I, I guess no. I guess not. You know what? Sure. Uh, uh, I have a, a film I wrote and directed. A short film, ten minutes long. It's out on uh, the Dust Channel. If any of your subscribers like. Uh, like sci-fi, it's a happy sci-fi, not a sad sci-fi or scary sci-fi, uh, and it's called the Universe of uh, Scotch and Hagen Das, and that's up on up on Dust. Um, that's what I'll, that's what I'll promote that. Okay, well, that's all the questions I've got. Uh, thank you, you so bet. much for doing this. Oh, it's my it's absolutely my pleasure. Thank you for having me on. <laughs>